Hi there, this is Chef Martin from the ThermoWorks Barbecue Patio. Here today, bringing the heat with special guest Lene Oxley Loop yes. from Sugars Barbecue in Battleground, Washington. How's it going? Doing great. Uh, it's a beautiful day for cooking outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we got some beautiful meat here, and I understand we're gonna make something delicious. Absolutely. Uh, today, what I wanna showcase is this uh, beautiful boneless strip loin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rub it with some really amazing flavor, get it on our barbecue pit, get it a little smoky, and then we're gonna hit it with uh, some high intensity heat to char the outside, take it to about medium rare. And then I'm going to slice it and then uh, serve it with a, uh, a compound. It's, it's gonna be a roasted garlic miso butter and it's gonna rock your socks off. It's gonna be wonderful, and we're gonna have a really good time showcasing this today. That roast garlic miso butter sounds fantastic. Yeah, it is, it's really good. It's a, it's just, it's umami in your face. It's, 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 it's you, trust me. If you've never wait. had it before, you're gonna I, love it. I can't wait. Well, let's dive in. Um, so we've got the New York strip. That's a great cut of meat, yes. uh, that strip loin. I love that. Um, I prefer New York strips over a lot of other steaks, personally, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to this as a roast. Yeah. Um, do we need to trim it? What needs to happen next? So, yeah, I mean, Really, you don't need to do much to this. It's kind of just one-stop shopping. You grab it, maybe you know, pat it with a little bit of paper towel, season it, and throw it on the cooker, and, 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 and you're off and running. But I think what we're gonna do right now is just kind of clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's really not very difficult. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things I love about a New York Strip is that it's, it's very underutilized. It tends to get forgotten. Uh, it kind of tends to get a back seat to the more regal, uh, you know, prime rib roast, ribeye roast, things of that nature. So a lot of times you can find these on sale so they can be really affordable. Great hot, great cold, great for sandwiches, cold boards, you know, cheese boards and things like that. Mm. And so this is gonna be perfect. So essentially what I'm gonna do is, um, you know, I wanna inspect it, make sure that there's no kind of funny stuff, these oddball little bits and pieces that uh, sometimes arise and show, uh, show up in a, in a roast. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean the outside of the underside of, of this roast. So I'm just gonna take a knife, and you wanna make sure, guys, your knife is really sharp. A sharp knife is a safe knife, guys. That is the truth. Okay, uh, a blunt knife is gonna, and it's gonna cause you a lot of grief. So make sure your knives are sharpened, and every once in a while, take them to a professional sharpener. Super, super important. Uh, I tell all my barbecue and grilling students to do that. So all I'm doing, guys, is I'm just cleaning this up. Um, you know, do you have to do this? Absolutely not. You just throw seasoning on it, throw it in the cooker and you're good to go. But I'm just going to clean the bottom side of this and, um, and then I'm going to flip it over and then clean the and top. It looks side. like you're mostly going after silver skin on the bottom. Absolutely. Like yeah. That, right? I mean, the, exactly. And there's not a whole lot here, but, um, what you want to also do is you want to try to make this as kind of a uniform shape and that's really mm -hmm. important. And that is going to help even cooking. Okay. If you have a real thick area covered with fat, um, uh, right alongside a very thinner area, then you're gonna have a little uneven cooking. And the whole idea is to get this perfectly medium rare slice to slice from uh, tip to tip, which is, um, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm really excited about that. So all I'm doing is just kind of going through this. It's not surgery, it's just a little sort of one over. Then I'm gonna flip it around. And then I've got some, you know, this fat cap is beautiful. Uh, this'll slice, this'll be beautiful. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of fat off. I'm not gonna skin it. Um, I really wanna have a little bit of fat because, you know, guys, a lot of times people look at fat and it's really just like they, 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 get, they cringe. They get, they get afraid of fat. And what's really important is that, especially when you're barbecuing, um, fat is good, guys. Fat is moisture, fat is flavor. You don't have to eat the fat, but definitely cook with the fat. Mm -hmm. uh, you can cut it away after it's all done. You don't have to, but if you skin this and cook it and then as opposed to leaving the fat and, and cooking it, the, uh, the flavor and the moisture is going to be uh, noticeably, uh, uh, noticeably different. And so, so all I'm going to do, just kind of clean it up. Again, oh, nice. not a whole lot of anything. If you want to just face it, which basically means like this edge here. Yeah. Just kind of clean up that face Yeah, a just kind of face it, just kind of go through. And again, make it a little even. Now you got yourself piece. a little steak to make while exactly. you're- Exactly, that's a little Scooby snack. Yeah. So that's it guys, that's really easy. I'm, so sometimes with roast, people are inclined to tie, uh, just to kind of create, a, a, it's just a nice uniform shape. In this particular application, I don't want to tie it. I want it to sort of just nice and, you know, nice and relaxed, kind of thin out just a little bit because we are going to pay attention 
to how we're cooking this. It's not like you walk away. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to require some, some uh, just, you know, you want to stay a little bit um, uh, paying attention to what you're doing. So, all right, fresh gloves, nice and clean, y'all. Super important. All right, first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take some of the toasted sesame oil, and we're just going to pour a little bit of it on. We don't need a whole lot. So you're just putting enough on there to kind of make it a little shiny, yeah, right? Yeah, just a little, give it a little, um, a little tack surface. And mm. you, you don't think that this would lend a lot of flavor, but trust me, guys, it really does. And you can do this the night before. So um, this is a really good uh, way to just like, if you've got a little spare time the night before, um, do, totally take, you know, basically put all this together, all this flavor together. Wrap it up in plastic or um, in, in uh, just a little container. Throw it in your refrigerator. Let it sit overnight, and, and the next day it's going to be amazing. Okay, so we've got the sesame oil. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of beef base. All right, and then I'm just going to plop it on here. And that's so rich and full of flavor. Absolutely. That's, like, that's amazing stuff. And I'm just going to smear this on, and basically it's kind of like a barbecue mud. Uh -huh. And this is, it's, it's salty and it's earthy and um, it's got some caramel color in it. And this is, this is going to transform and help build this bark oh, on this beautiful that piece looks of meat. already. So super easy to work with. And again, just going to get it rubbed up. I'm keeping one hand free from the meat and ingredients, the rub, and I've got a clean hand so I can grab my spice container with confidence and I'm not cross-contaminating any, cross anything. That's important. So I've got my, um, my serious bowl, so Sugar's Barbecue Serious Bowl rub, and I'm just going to put a pretty decent amount on this roast. This rub is salty. It's got garlic and onion, cumin, pepper, and it's just perfect for this roast. Works really well mm. with the toasted sesame oil. You can, you can smell it already. Oh, yeah. This thing hasn't even begun to cook, and you can smell it already. So this is pretty much what I'm doing, guys. I don't need to go crazy on it because we've got two steps to this. We've got a, the roasted garlic miso butter that's going to get put on there. So um, I don't want to go overdo it with this uh, with the rub. So that's good for right now. Again, you can do this the night before, put it in your refrigerator. The next day, take it out, let it sit for about maybe 45 minutes uh, out on the, on the counter, get go it to room temp temperature before you stick it on your cooker. We'll be using the signals thermometer uh, to keep track of this. And you said that we're going to be doing like a reverse sear kind of thing. So what temperature are we going to cook this to the fr at, at first? So I really, I love roasts cooked medium rare. Uh, especially with a roast like this, because on the outside you're going to get something that's a little bit more uh, medium well uh, for somebody that doesn't want uh, you know something pink. But I'm a fan of medium rare. I grew up on medium rare roasts, and that's how I like to cook it. So we're looking for a target temp, internal target temp, when you pull it of about 125. Okay. Then I'm going to pull it and I'm going to uh, let it sit. We're going to wrap it up, you know, just tent it, and then it'll carry over cooked to about 128, and then I'll be perfect medium rare. And uh, and what temperature do we have our grill set at? So right now we've got it at about 203. Two six, two six. Okay. So two oh six, and um, we've got a beautiful set of coals in here, a little bit of smoke, and uh, we're gonna get this reverse here. So I'm gonna put this on the cooker. It's gonna just kind of coast for a little while, get a little smoke, uh, and um, probably for about maybe, maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and then I'm gonna take it off, and then we're gonna raise the temp, and then we're gonna go to town, and we're gonna just char the char this um, this sounds, piece of meat. It's gonna be great. beautiful. Let's go for it. I'll get the lid for okay. you. Okay. All right. So. We're at about 220 in there. Why don't oh, we okay. throw it on in there? Okay, perfect. And I'll get the I'll get the probe, yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Let's see, that's gonna need to go right there. Yep. Beautiful. And there we go. All right. Excellent. Good night roast. Yes. So we're gonna dive right into this um, roasted garlic miso compound butter. This is umami in your face. It's beautiful. This is great uh, on the roast that we're making today. It's great on grilled vegetables. 
mm. uh, fillets of fish, uh, wonderful on potatoes, good on corn on the cob. It's really versatile. Uh, it's salty and it's earthy. It's nutty. And it's going to be really, really good. You guys are going to really enjoy this. So check this out. All right. So um, we roasted this garlic earlier today. You put a head of garlic, cut the top off, put a little oil on it, wrap it in foil, roast it at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. Perfect. And you end up with this wonderful, it's soft. There's no structure to it at all, yeah, almost. Yeah, beautiful. All the fibers are just broken down, the sugars. Uh, and roasted garlic's great. Roasted garlic, and if you've got your barbecue on uh, and you've got room, guys, get a couple of heads of garlic. Uh, snip the tops off, yeah. uh, hit them with a little bit of olive oil or any kind of oil of your choice, a little bit of salt and pepper. You don't even have to go that far. Throw them in a little pan on your cooker and uh, just let them, just forget about them for about an hour. Take them, take them back and, you, and you're going to have a beautiful roasted garlic. Throw it in your freezer for a later date. This stuff keeps for a, a long time and you always have roasted garlic and it's perfect. It's a great ingredient to have. Mm -hmm. It's relatively inexpensive and so that's a, a bonus and you can use it for a lot of different things. All right, so really easy we've got roasted garlic we've got a miso paste miso paste usually in your um in the refrigerated asian section of the grocery store specialty store um this is fermented beans bean curd uh this is wonderful this is salty and it's earthy and uh, it comes in a lot of different styles you this is a yellow miso paste which is a mild miso paste you can get red you can get uh, like almost like a almost like a brown um and uh they all have different levels of salinity. They all have different uh, flavors. But to start with, this is uh, your standard, uh, you know, a, 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 a mild miso paste. When you go to sushi restaurants and you have miso soup, this is what they're making the uh, base out of. So basically, the darker the color, the stronger the flavor. Absolutely, the yes. And then we have some um, scallions, some green onions, which would be perfect. And we have some, uh, some temperature, like some room temperature softened butter. I don't want the butter to be melted, guys. Just a little bit soft so you can work it. And we're going to combine all these together. It could not be any easier. I like to use a fork and manually combine this together uh, as opposed to a, uh, like a, a, a food processor mm -hmm. or a, uh, like a stand mixer because I really want there to be chunks of garlic. This is just a personal thing. If you want to blend it up, that's fine. Uh, I like a little bit of visual uh, and structural integrity to the compound butter that's going to go over to the roast. So that's what I'm going to do. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this roasted garlic. Empty that in a bowl. You want a bowl large enough that you can work. And then I've got the miso paste. Now, a, a little goes a long way with this stuff. So I've got about, uh, I've got about eight, uh, eight or nine cloves of garlic, because you, you can never have too much garlic. And then I'm going to take about, I'm going to start with about a tablespoon and a half of this miso paste. And again, a little goes a long way. This stuff is pretty powerful. All right, then I'm going to take my fork and just kind of smash it together. Super easy. All right, super easy. Comes together really fast. So I've got this. Uh, the, I've got the roasted garlic, the miso paste. I've got some gonna, green onions. I'm just gonna smell that sure. real quick. Yeah, that smells. Amazing. Isn't that good? Yeah. So I've got about, I've got about uh, three nice size green onions. So I want the green part and the white part. Okay, guys, make sure they're nice and clean. Some of these guys, you know, they grow in the ground, and sometimes they have a little bit of real estate attached to them. <laughs> so we want to make sure that they're nice and clean. I'm going to bunch them together, right? Fingers behind. And so all I'm going to do nice. is going to slice these up. Little slices. Okay. Then I'm just going to go put the knife through it one more time just to break it up a little bit. So fine chopped, but not minced. Yeah, yeah a little bit, you know, little chunks is fine. Okay. And then, right, when you're scraping the board, turn your knife upside down so you're not ruining your edge. All right, so I've got the scallions in with the miso and the roasted garlic, so I'm just going to mix it up together. Now, as a compound butter, this looks amazing. But this right here, like I would rub that on some chicken before cooking it. Absolutely. I would, you know, that, yep. that, that's, a, that's a great rub, a great paste, a great marinade kind it of is. thing right and there. It is, and it's really powerful. Super salty, super powerful. What the butter is going to do, it's going to add fat, really needed fat, and that's going to help uh, kind of extend and uh, dilute a little bit yeah. of, that, of that saltiness. Yeah. This is super easy, guys. You're going to let the, room, the butter come to room temperature. In this case, it's definitely really warm today. Yeah. 
So I'm going to just throw that in there. A little bit warmer than room temperature here, but that's okay. Right. And then uh, this is perfect. It's almost the consistency of mayonnaise. Yeah. All right, guys. And then all we're going to do, we're going to take our spatula. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it together, guys. I don't want to obliterate this thing. And you can make this the day ahead of time. Uh, and put it in your refrigerator, let the flavors develop overnight. And then um, before you're going to use it, let it come to room temperature and soften. Don't put this in the microwave. Don't melt it. Uh, ideally, you really don't want to do that. All right. So now uh, we're going to wait for our beef to come up to temp, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Absolutely. See you in a minute. All right. We're about, a, uh, we're about 105 internal, which is perfect. So what I want to do is start the second part of this cook. So I'm going to just carefully remove the roast from the cooker. I'm going to leave the probe in there, guys. I want to know what the temperature is at, at any given time uh, because that's a really important step in the cooking of this uh, New York roast. So the second part of this is I want to take the diffuser plate off of, um, off of, the, of the cooker. I'm going to reveal the charcoal, the coals, and I'm going to finish cooking this roast right directly over the coals to get it nice and charred. And that's going to pair beautifully with the uh, roasted garlic miso butter that's going to go on at the end. Okay, so we took the deflector plate out, and now this guy's going on right back over the coals. Is Absolutely, that correct? Absolutely, yep. We're going to finish the cook. I'm at, a, I'm at 107 internal. I've got the probe stuck right in the middle of this roast. And all I'm going to do now, and this is really important, guys. Do not walk away. Very important. I'm going to put this roast directly over the coals. Now I've got, I've, there's no diffuser plate, so all that heat is going right to the bottom of this. And I'm going to basically, uh, this is, the lid's open for the rest of the cook. Very important. Um, and I'm just going to monitor this. I want to have a char on the outside. So I've got it set up so that the, the coals are revealed on, on this end. I've got the diffuser plate. This di diffuser plate is in two pieces, which is awesome. I can have a diffu half the diffuser plate uh, in place, and then I can have the other part removed, uh, revealing the charcoal. Uh, and that's how I'm going to finish cooking this meat. Uh, it's going to have a little bit more well-cooked on the ends, which is perfect for people that don't want quite as much uh, rare in their beef, and it'll be uh, perfect. So all we're doing now is we're just going to monitor it. And flip it and every flip once it in a while. And flip it as needed. Okay. Uh, in fact, I like to just kind of keep, I just like to start flipping it. And you can see some of that beautiful bark coming up. Wonderful. And again, you know, you've got all this beautiful fat. You know, I did clean it up a little bit. I didn't remove a lot of fat. I like fat in this. This is perfect. You don't have to eat it, but definitely cook with it, guys. Don't be afraid of fat. Fat is beautiful when you're doing barbecue. Slow and low, hot and fast. It's, it's, it's equal. It's, it's beautiful. So we're just kind of hanging out. It's a good time to crack open a favorite beverage of yours, maybe. <laughs> and enjoy and some company with your friends and your family while you, uh, while, uh, you dazzle them with your cooking skills. All right. All right. So we're just going to cook this. And about how long do you think this is going to take to get us up to that 120, 125 temperature? You know what? Um, probably just a few minutes. Uh, okay. I would imagine, uh, you know, it, it depends on the thickness of the roast, quite honestly. In this particular instance, you know, we can go uh, probably, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so. Okay. And it's going to creep up. So now I've got some flames. You definitely want to maintain uh, an eyeball on this cook. So I'm just going to shift it around. That smells good, huh? It does. It smells amazing. Now, uh, it's important to note that uh, we're leaving the probe in on this. If you're leaving your probe in, making, make sure it's not over the flame as much as you can. Uh, if there is a flare-up, you can burn your probe out or melt that transition. Um, we're being careful with that here. So just exercise caution. If you don't feel safe leaving that in, you don't want to burn it out, uh, just use your thermo pen and start checking it um, every, every minute or two. And what you're going to find right now is that um, you're going to start to see that, uh, that temperature rise a little bit more rapidly than when it was just sitting with the diffuser plate on it and uh, slowly creeping up. Right now I'm at 108 and it's just starting to creep up. And again, I've got some flames. Yeah. Little char is good. And now what you're also going to see with this roast is it, it's just going to start plumping up um, like it's being blown up um, internally. And what's happening is now you've gotten all this nice smoke flavor, right? You've done a little bit of low and slow, uh, a little bit of the, that's what part of this wonderful reverse sear. You've got a lot of smoke flavoring, a lot of really great flavors developing on the inside of this meat. Now it's getting, it's, we're, we're building it. Yep. We're just about done with the sear at this point.
Alrighty, we're good. So we're gonna put this offset here. All right, and we're gonna close this up, and it'll. Uh, we're gonna let it finish cooking, probably another maybe five, six, seven minutes, and we're good. All right. So we're, in good shape. we're we're putting we're we're putting it back over indirect because we had we've accomplished a great sear on there. Yes. There's no point leaving it back over the heat when we're right. not there yet, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. We got the char that we want. We don't want to incinerate the outside. Absolutely. There's a difference between burning it up. <laughs> And, and creating a nice char. Absolutely. Uh, char is nice and flavorful. You can still taste the rub. You can still taste the seasonings on the meat, uh -huh. on the outside, on the bark. So this has been over indirect heat for a little while longer. We've taken the probe out. Where are we at? Are we good to go? What I do is I take the, the average temp all over. So we're about medium on the outsides. We're rare on the inside. I think we're going to be in good shape, guys. All right, that's great. Something for, for everybody. So, this is perfect. And I'll just take this home. <laughs> All right, you said we're going to tent this? Yep, just loosely cover it with foil. All right. That's it. And then uh, that's it. That's all you need to do. Except wait. And that's it. Yep. Okay. Excellent. We're good to go. Okay. I think I've waited as long as I can. Can we please eat it now? <laughs> yeah, let's carve into this All thing. Right. Look at this, it's beautiful. It's got oh, some yeah. char on it. It smells intoxicating. It does. And we are gonna have a good time with this. So uh, honestly, you just, you can cut the steaks out of this. You can cut nice and thin slices. Uh, this is really intensely flavored. I'm gonna cut nice thin slices so everybody gets what they want. Um, so really easy, just all I'm gonna do it's kind of a nice sharp knife, guys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. That is so juicy. There's so much juice running out of this. So I've got medium slices on the outside, headed towards medium rare as I get closer to the center. Mm-hmm. That looks amazing. All right, and now we're into the rare. So everybody gets what they want. Yeah. That's really, really important. Okay. Yeah. So we've got this guy, and I'll put this over here. That'll be for me for later. <laughs> now we're going to take our roasted garlic miso butter. And while this is hot, really important, I got a nice good dollop of this. And again, a little bit of this goes a long way. You've got enough here in this recipe to last quite a bit. And all I'm gonna do is just brush this sliced meat with this roasted garlic miso butter. And I'm gonna let it melt into the meat. And this is rich, guys. This is awesome. This is perfect cold as well mm -hmm. uh, on a piece of meat, uh, on a piece of bread or something, on a cracker, on a lavash or something. And then um, got a little parsley, hit it with some parsley, and you're good to go. That is gorgeous. Done deal. So. All right. And of course, we have some here for us to taste. I'm going to dig right into that. Absolutely. Be my guest. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, the name. That was everything I wanted it to be and more. Awesome. Mm. That's perfect. I'm going to try a little piece too. Absolutely. I like the end. Extra crust. So good, guys. So good. It's salty. It's earthy. You got good umami flavor. The smoke, the char, obviously the beef works together and it's great, guys. Try this. Really, really good. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Lene, for coming and joining us on the, on, the, on the barbecue patio today and for bringing the heat. Um, again, this is Chef Martin, Lene Oxley Loop from Sugar's Barbecue. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, feel free to uh, subscribe and we'll see you next time.